us Amen. in 2019, all right? And the scripture tells us, I'm not going to read that from the word today, but the scripture tells us that the race is not to the swift nor is it to the strong. And there's another scripture that tells us that we've got to endure till the end. That's so we, right. if you want to be a winner, if you want to cross the finish line, do I got any finishers in the house? Any that are going to finish strong? Come on. That I'm talking to you today. Then, then listen, then, then, then you're going to have to keep persevering, all right? And it's interesting that the word of God tells us that Christianity is often compared to a race. And I'll have you know it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It takes a lifetime, all right? And I want to just kind of encapsulate the main point of the message right away. It's not how you start. It's not if you stumble in the middle of the race. The most important part of the race the Christian life is how you finish. And I want you to understand that you can finish well and you can finish strong. I always wonder at the beginning, at the end of every year, as I approach the new year, I always ask myself the question, I wonder if this is the year when Jesus Christ will return in the rapture of the church. How many of you hope that it is? Come on. Jesus is going to come back. We know that. Uh, it may, in fact, it may happen before we ever get to 2019. Hello? But let me tell you, whenever he comes, or whenever the Lord calls us home, we've got to continue to go on and finish strong. Amen. It was a hot day. Tuesday, July 20th, 1993, Washington, D.C. As Vincent Foster sat in the Rose Garden. That morning, he watched as President Clinton announce his new FBI director. Foster returned to his White House counsel's office after the ceremony. He took care of some legal business. He then talked with President Clinton, who was his boyhood friend for a few moments. He ate lunch at his desk that day. A little after one o'clock, Foster left the office telling his staff that he would soon return. He pulled his Honda Accord onto the streets of Washington, D.C. and drove it to a little visited national park on a bluff overlooking the Pot Potomac River. He got out, leaving his suit coat in the car. In his hand was an antique 38 caliber weapon, a revolver. He walked across an open field and standing beside a cannon pointing out over the woods, Vincent Foster took his own life. When President Clinton heard the news, he called together his staff to console them on the loss of someone that they had all loved and respected. Then President Clinton said these words. He said, it would be wrong to define a life like Vincent Foster's in terms of only how it ended. And how many of you know that President Clinton is right in one sense? But the sad fact is that no matter how much Vincent Foster's friends, his families, his colleagues, and workmates try uh, think about him to try to, 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 to try to put the end of his life out of their minds, how many of you realize that his life, the way it ended, will always overshadow his that's end? Right, that's right, that's right. Because here's the point today, church. In life and in ministry, in your job, in your relationships. How things end colors almost everything that goes before it. How many of you agree yes. with that? And this morning, I want to encourage you that you are going to finish the race well. In fact, I just want you to make a declaration today. I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm going to finish well for Jesus, all right? Just say it out loud. I'm going to finish well for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I'm a finisher, and I'm a winner, and when, when that day comes, when the trumpet sounds, or when Jesus calls me home, I'm going to be running the race, and I'm going to run right through those pearly gates. Come on, give a high five to my loved ones, because I'm convinced that serving him is worth everything. Amen. Amen. You're going to finish the race well. Paul, the apostle, was a man who finished well. Absolutely. 
As he sat in a Roman jail cell, he was soon to be martyred for his faith. And you, and you sense the incredible relief in his spirit as he says this, 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7. He says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. In other words, he was saying, listen, I'm determined to finish strong. Now, we know and understand that there's a lot of people in the Bible who did not finish well, right? Think of Judas. Judas is one of Jesus' disciples. He heard Jesus teach. He went out. He, was, he went out two by two with the others, healing the sick, exercising demons. Judas did a lot of disciple kinds of things, and yet he's remembered for how his relationship with Jesus ended. We don't think of Judas as casting out demons. What we think of Judas is betraying the Lord with the kiss, selling him for 30 pieces of silver, and then he also ultimately took his own life. And it's interesting that the word contrasts Judas' life with Peter's life. How many know Peter messed up? Hello. He was there when Jesus was about to be crucified and a little gal said, hey, he's one of them. And he had to curse, the, curse God and then profanity to say, no, I'm not one of them. But the Bible says he went out and he went bitterly. And let me tell you something. In other words, even though he stumbled in the race of life, he got up and the Bible says he finished well. Come on. I tell you something. I want to be a Peter, not a Judas. Amen. Yeah. All through the word, you have these contrasts. You have Saul and David, right? Two kings of Israel. Saul was a great king, towered over the people by a, a full head in his height and stature, a handsome man. But his life ended with him visiting the witch at Ender, asking for counsel from a witch. Can you believe it? David, on the other hand, uh, you know how many know he wasn't a saint? Uh, yeah, he, he messed up. He committed adultery. He he murdered somebody by sending, you know, your, uh, things out to, you know, to take Uriah's life in battle. But let me tell you, when he was confronted with this sin, what he did was he said, listen, I, 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 I'm going to repent. I'm going to turn to God. And how many of you realize that David is remembered as a man after God's own heart? You see, David finished well and Saul didn't. I want to tell you this morning that it's God's heart. It's God's will for you to finish your life well. Come on. I could go on and tell you about Demas. He forsook Paul, having loved the present world. We don't know what ever happened to him. He just left. Then there was John Mark. He got discouraged and quit too, right? But at the end of John Mark's life, the Paul even said, look, send him to me. He's profitable for ministry. Uh, someone who finished well and someone who did it. So if you have the Bible, that was my introduction today. He had the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Open it up with me, Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3. I love these verses. They're powerful. A great way to finish the new year. The, I mean, finish this old year out. And uh, this is what it says. Therefore, we also tell your neighbor this is for you. And this is for you. We also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. If you're going to finish well, first of all, you've got to recognize that you, that you run your own race. you got to run your own race. When I was in high school, I was in cross-country track. Oh, yeah, I was slim and trim back then, all right? And I was uh, Worthington Harrier. And, and interestingly enough, the officials, they always went out before we had a race, and they would, we generally ran on golf courses, and they would put little flags down all around so we knew exactly where to run. In other words, they marked out the race for us. 
And you couldn't say to yourself, man, this is a three-mile race. Well, I think I'll just shave about a half a mile off of this by cutting across here. How many of you know if you're going for the medal, if you're going for the win, that isn't going to work? You can't look up the hill and say, oh, man, that hill is huge like the hill on my first race in Blue Earth, Minnesota. Yes, I still do remember that hill running up and in the pain that it caused. Hello. Uh, but you, you just got to run the race that's set out before you. And so it is as well in the Christian life. God has gone before you. He knows your end from the beginning. He knows all the days of your life. In his great foreknowledge, he has gone ahead of you and planted these flags ahead of you. And that's why the scripture says, run the with endurance the race that is set before you. And each race is unique. You don't run the same race I do, and I can't run your race for you. And as we look at back at 2018, there might be some of you here today that are saying, man, 2018, it was all uphill for me. It was very difficult. I went through trial after trial after test. It was the most difficult year of my life. And there might be others of you that say, well, my race was easy. I was running downhill with a tailwind, and life was good, and it was just such an, an easy year. Listen, we don't know what challenges lie before us. But we have to run our own race. And the silliness and the ridiculousness comes when we start comparing our lives with other people's lives. You've got your race to run and I've got my race to run. But sometimes the enemy of our souls comes along and he says, well, you know, God just blessed that guy over there. And look at the job he has. Look at the support he has. And look at the opportunities he has. And things just seem to work out for them. And, and things are better for them. And, and the enemy will tell you, your life is too hard. Your race just can't really be run. And the devil will start trying to, you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to get you to be a quitter. Come on. Is there anybody in the house today that says, I'm not going to quit. Hello. I'm for me and my house. We're serving the Lord for the rest of this year and all the way till Jesus comes. Come on. Amen. We've got to run our own race. God says, this is the race you're accountable for. Guess what? I'm not accountable for you to run your race. I'm accountable for me to run my race. Hello. Amen. And so don't think about others. Jesus says this. He says, just look at me and together we're going to get you to the finish line. Then secondly, if you're going to finish well, you've got to get rid of all that trips you up. 